Hello, welcome to the Crane Gas Plant. Today I'm here to talk to you about workplace ergonomics, musculoskeletal disorders, and how to reduce the risks in the workplace. My name is Jason Pierce. I am the PSM Environmental Health and Safety Coordinator for Navitus Midstream. I work in two gas plants across West Texas. I've got five years in gas plant operations and gas processing. I've got one year in process safety management, environmental health and safety. I also have 10 years as a classroom instructor at the university and high school level. I'm a current Odessa College safety student and I'll graduate from Odessa College uh, from the OSHA program in May, which is just a couple of weeks away. Workplace ergonomics, what is ergonomics? Ergonomics is the science of designing the workplace, keeping in mind the capabilities and limitations of your employees. If you do not have work sites that are designed for the limitations of your employees, they may become fatigued, frustrated, or hurt. This leads to poor productivity, poor product quality, and an overall low morale in the work area. Ergonomics and production facilities. Things that we discuss in the safety program for Navitus Midstream. We discuss common musculoskeletal disorders, ergonomic risk factors, and then some of your main injuries uh, to certain parts of the body like the back, arms, wrist, shoulders, or neck. We describe ergonomic risk factors in our environments, our working environments, be it the office, be it out in a compressor, in a compressor building, or uh, operating heavy equipment. We talk about gaining knowledge and basic understanding of workplace ergonomics. Ergonomic controls is something that we're going to touch on today in this PowerPoint. That is a big deal. The controls that we're going to use to stop or at least limit ergonomic injuries. Uh, we're going to discuss ergonomics program development and measurements of program success. Those are all parts of the Navitus Midstream Safety Program uh, in regards to ergonomics. What are some common MSD hazards at the crane gas plant? Sprain, strains, and tears. That's probably number one. Back pain, carpal tunnel syndrome, hernias. Each one of these can be chronic or acute, uh, but when we're talking about musculoskeletal disorders, we're normally talking about stuff that happens to a body over a period of time due to repetitive movement. So, my job as a safety guy, how do we eliminate or reduce injuries? Engineering controls is the number one way that we can reduce musculoskeletal injury. This is the preferred approach. Why? Because the job design takes out the ability of a worker to get hurt. It's a preferred approach. You take the capabilities and the limitations of the workforce. You design the work environment, taking those limitations uh, into account. You change the way materials, parts, products can be transported. You use mechanical assisting devices to relieve heavy load lifting. You change workstation layouts so that things are height adjustable, things are within reach. People do not have to reach out long distances to grab equipment or implements. Excuse me. Administrative controls. If you don't have engineering controls in place, you have to use administrative controls, okay? So who, what is the management doing? What are the administrators of the plant doing to limit musculoskeletal disorders? Administrative control strategies are policies and practices that reduce MSD risk, but they do not eliminate workplace hazards. So how can we do this? Number one, 
We can reduce shift length or limit the amount of overtime. The longer someone works, the more things can come into place that might get them hurt, be it fatigue or anything else. Change, changes in job rules and procedures, such as scheduling more breaks or allowing for rest and recovery. Rest and recovery, of course, combats fatigue and gives the worker a chance uh, to recover from any labor that's likely to get him hurt if the fatigue sets in. Rotating workers through jobs that are physically tiring. Having teams. Someone spending a short amount of time doing something strenuous and then taking a break while someone else steps in and continues that job. Training in the recognition of risk factors for MSDs and instructions and work practices and techniques that can ease the task demands or burden. Okay, so training. Training is also a big part of administrative controls. Do you have your employees trained on how to recognize and reduce hazards in the workplace as far as ergonomic injuries, musculoskeletal injuries are concerned? The last thing we can do to try to eliminate these injuries is by using proper personal protective equipment. What is that? PPE generally provides a barrier between the worker and the hazard source. These can be respirators, earplugs, safety goggles, chemical aprons, safety shoes, hard hats. All of those things are examples of PPE. As far as ergonomics is concerned, we're dealing with limb movements. So we need to be talking about proper gloves. We need to be talking about proper footwear. Things of that nature that can enhance the chances of us being safe at the job site. So, common injuries, sprains, strains and tears. Okay, these are things, these are injuries that are consistent with muscles, they're consistent with joints, and it also usually involves moving a joint or a muscle in an awkward direction with too much force and or, okay? You can have too much force or you can have an awkward direction or you can have both, which is kind of a double whammy. These types of injuries are avoided with proper warm-up and proper tool use. So that goes back to training. Have we trained our employees how to warm up correctly when they're about to do a strenuous activity? Have we trained them to use the proper tool for the job? Both of those things are very important. Not using a proper tool for a job gets people hurt all the time and not warming up your body before strenuous activity also gets people hurt all the time. Fatigue greatly enhances the probability of strains, sprains, and tears. Being tired greatly enhances your chances of injury. We see it on the athletic fields. We see it on football. We see it in basketball. We see it in baseball. When do people get hurt? They always get hurt towards the end of the game when fatigue sets in, okay? So we gotta keep that in mind when we're planning a job. Ergonomic training is an annual training at Navitus Midstream. Okay, that's awareness. Training brings about awareness. That's part of our safety program. Ergonomics is a big deal. We strive to keep people from getting hurt. Now you've got back pains and hernias. This is the second MSD that I wanna talk about because it's also very common in this industry. And the reason why is because we're moving large pieces of equipment. We're, we're moving large tools. We've got heavy things out here, okay, in the oil and gas business and in the gas plant and gas processing industry, okay? So, backs and hernias, okay? This is the core of your body. This is what ties everything else together. If you injure your back or you injure your hernia, you're gonna be out of commission for a long time. That's very common with core injuries. If you hurt them, you're done for quite some time. Both injuries are common. The torso and core, they're close together. You know, they're a mirror image of each other. When do these injuries, these things happen? Lifting something, pushing something, moving a heavy object incorrectly can oftentimes hurt a back or hurt a hernia. We emphasize proper lifting techniques and the use of lifting equipment. Hey, if we can get away with moving something out here without using our bodies, we're gonna do it. That might involve a boom, that might involve crane, 
cranes. It might involve uh, lifts, like a forklift. We're going to use the equipment we've got to protect our people. We're not going to try to move something if we can find a better way to do it. And that's all discussed in your job safety analysis. Last but not least, always ask for help. Too many people is better than too few. So many people get injured when they're out there by themselves, there's no one around to help them, and they don't want to go find somebody, they're just going to get it done themselves. That's a bad idea. Stop work, go find more people that can get their eyes on the job and figure out a better way to do it than just one person trying to move a heavy object. What do we want to avoid when it comes to ergonomic injuries? Okay, this is, this is pretty standard stuff here. Awkward positions. Anytime your body is in awkward position, it's not in it, at its best position to exert force. That's when you tend to find yourself becoming injured. Excessive bending, lifting, or reaching. Reaching out for something heavy puts strain on arms, back, and other parts of the body. Using excessive force, period. When you're putting out more force than your body can handle, this is when that hernia goes, this is when that back goes. These things are gonna hurt you if you're not careful. Using unnecessary force, now here's something you might not have thought of. Typing at a keyboard. Can you use unnecessary force while you're typing at a keyboard? Sure you can, I'm the guy that does it. I hammer out on those keys all the time, come to find out that's bad for you ergonomically. Okay, you can use unnecessary force, force you don't need when you're doing a job and that sets you up for injury. Working in certain positions for long periods of time. If you're working in an awkward position for a long period of time, you can hurt muscle groups, you can hurt joints, you can hurt your back, you can hurt your hernia, you can hurt your legs, you can hurt your shoulders. You do not want to be in an awkward position for a long period of time when you're exerting force. Long durations of activities. Once again, we go back to the fatigue factor. If you're working for a long time, you have a greater chance of being injured. You wanna break those durations up. You wanna have plenty of recovery time. You wanna fight that fatigue that's setting in that's gonna be the cause of you injuring yourself. And the last thing to talk about when you're talking about avoiding things is hot and cold temperatures. When you're writing up a job safety analysis and you're taking MSDs into account, you're gonna to have to look at ambient temperature. If it's cold outside, do we have the proper clothing? How much is this job going to have the possibility to hurt us because it's cold outside? Are we gonna be properly warmed up? Are our muscle groups gonna be warmed up? Are we gonna have the brakes in order to come inside and get warmed up? All of those factors you have to take into consideration when you're trying to protect someone's muscles and joints as a safety person in this industry. Is it hot outside? How, do the, how is it being, how is hot outside going to hurt somebody? Are you gonna become dehydrated? Are you gonna become fatigued? Are you gonna start to not be able to pay attention and focus on what you're doing because these factors set in? Once again, we've got a plan for this when we're doing a job safety analysis. We've got a plan for these ergonomic issues. All of these things, as a safety person that we've talked about today, we've got to keep in mind when we're working in the oil and gas industry. Ergonomic injuries are expensive to companies. They're expensive to employees. Lost production time hurts production. Efficiency drops. All of these things are negative results of ergonomic injuries. So keep that in mind when you're a safety man in the oil and gas industry and when you're designing job safety analysis for any projects in that industry. Thank you very much.